Hey there, and welcome to the Do Life Big podcast. This podcast is going to be your jam if you want to live to your full potential and don't believe in half-assing anything in your life. If we want to do life big, that means we've got to get out of our own way because we only have this one shot to make it awesome. I'm your host, Kathy, and I'm a mom of three whose BFF is cold brew, a retired school teacher turned online entrepreneur and an author. I'm loud, bold, and will always keep it real. I'm determined to live my best freaking life possible, and I'm here to help you do the same. I'll be packing this podcast with tips, motivation, inspiration, and strategies to finally get you where you want to go. And we will have a ton of laughter along the way because let's be honest, we can't ever take ourselves too seriously, right? I'm so excited you are here with me today. Now let's get this party started. All right. Hi, my friend. Welcome and welcome back to the Do Life Big podcast. I'm so excited to have you here today. Today is going to be a really special episode because we have a very special guest. Catherine Beck is here with us today. And Catherine and I connected because we have the same business mentor, James Wedmore, and we actually just got to meet in person for the first time um, at a live business event that we attended out in California a couple of months back. So I am so excited to have Catherine on the show today. Thanks so much for being here, Catherine. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited. So I think it would be great if you could kind of fill the listeners in, just tell them a little bit about yourself and what you do and how you could help them. Okay. Great <laughs> way to start. So I am Catherine Beck. I am a voice and dialect coach. I am, I call myself a former actor, but once an actor, always an actor. But really I transitioned into voiceovers in 2000 when I realized that you can make money with your voice and you didn't have to be on stage for several hours every single day, like day after day, week after week. And you didn't have to be on set you know, for 14 hours a day, I could literally make money with my voice. Like the quickest job I think I've had is 10 minutes. And I just thought that was the coolest thing that, you know, how much is translated through your voice and how it affects and impacts others. So I was living in Chicago. I moved to Hollywood as most actors do. And I really started to put a focus on voiceover, but What happened was, is in 2004, I, by chance, well, nothing's really by chance, is it? But by (laughs) chance, I I met an Australian and he was in town for six days. We met and fell in love within those six days and had to figure out like, what's the next step? How are we going to continue this relationship, this romance? And within a couple of days, he was flying back to stay with me and within knowing each other for three months, he asked me to marry him. And by, you know, knowing him just seven months, I was married and moving to Sydney, Australia and had to figure out like, what do I do now? (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's so romantic though. (laughs) Yeah. So I still wanted to be an actor. So I thought, okay, I've got to learn the Australian accent so I can do work over here. And I really (laughs) suffered and struggled for a good year to master the accent. So I could keep working as an actor over here. And it was in that struggle that I learned a thing or two and was able to master it. And once I mastered it, I then had actors from Australia and then other countries asking me, can I do the opposite? Can I help them master the American accent so they can book US roles? So that was my first entry point into the online space and coaching and teaching. And It was a few years ago that I just felt like unfulfilled, like there, I was meant for something more that while I loved helping actors, I felt like I was meant to help more people. And so I started on the journey of figuring out, well, how is that going to happen in this group coaching program with James Wedmore? And I was surrounded by online experts and entrepreneurs and I really loved working with them. And I thought, this is my audience. This is this new audience that I really want to expand and work with. So that started my journey into seeing how could I translate the work that I do in voice to help experts, entrepreneurs, coaches, 
And it wasn't actually until December of last year, so just a few months ago, that wow. everything kind of clicked and fell into place when I was at BBD Live, which you and I were at, which is yep. a three-day live event for those of you that don't know. And it was really transformative. And one of the things that they do is he has finalists who get up on stage and talk about the breakthrough that they had this past year. And the audience votes on a winner and the winner wins $20,000. Now, one of the finalists, I said to her the night before the speech, I said, do you want me to coach you? Last year, I coached Michelle and Michelle won the $20,000 prize. You want me to coach you as well? And she said, yes, please. And so we spent <laughs> no brainer. an hour, no brainer. We spent a half an hour working together and she went from overwhelmed in her head, second guessing, frustrated. I can't do this to trusting me and trusting the process and releasing and letting go and connecting and being present with me and with her audience. <laughs> Some yeah. other friends are watching me coach her through this to the point of her bursting into tears evoking laughter from us and tears. And yeah, it was great. Like hanging on to every second word that she said. And I said, you got this now. You do exactly what you just did now and transcend it onto the stage tomorrow. You make it about them. It's not about you. And she did that. And she walked away with the $20,000 prize. But what I realized that was far greater than that gift that she gave me that I realized this is my love here is helping these experts amplify their message on more stages. The amount of people who listened to her and said, I want to be a breakthrough next year too. I, want I know I said that. Yeah. That was the ripple effect that really got me and said, look at what happens. Look at the impact that we have when we are aligned with what we are meant to do. And how many people you can touch just with the power of your voice. And that's when I realized that your voice literally is your most powerful tool to creating influence and impact in the world. And so in a nutshell, that's what I do is I help experts amplify their voice so they can make a greater impact in the world. I love that so much. And you have such a nice voice yourself. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, it's funny because when I saw Kelly on stage, Mm -hmm. at BBD Live, after the whole thing was over and done with, I'm like, that's it. I'm going to be on that stage next year. I'm going to win the whole thing. I don't even care about the money. I just wanted to have the major breakthrough. I'm like, I'm going to be on yeah. that stage and I know exactly who I'm going to go to. I'm going to have to go to Catherine <laughs> <laughs> to learn how to do this. And it's funny that you were talking about, you know, just making that shift, that transition that you went through where you were doing something that you know, you love, but you felt like you were pulled, being pulled to do something else and have a greater impact. And that's so similar to what I went through when I went mm -hmm. from building that health and fitness business online for nine years to all of a sudden having that feeling like I'm just, I feel like I'm being pulled to do something else and like help people really have these breakthroughs with their mindset and, you know, skyrocket their income and just have more confidence in themselves as an entrepreneur. And, but being able to make that decision and that shift, it can be a little tricky sometimes, right? It's like, because yeah. you're leaving something good, but you have this feeling on your heart and you just have to go for it. So I'm so glad that you did. You're so good at what you do. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And and that's what it was, you know, for anyone who's listening, who is considering pivoting or they're not quite sure like what their business is or what they want to do. Sometimes it is a rocky road. Sometimes it takes like trying this out and testing that before you finally find the piece that connects all the dots together. And when it does, it's the best feeling. And you just got to like, let yourself have that time to let it take whatever it takes to get you there. And then trust it because you probably notice this as well is you'll start to doubt and second guess yourself and go, well, this other thing that I had was really good too. And I know I can help people with that. And I also really like doing that too. <laughs> it's oh going to be this back and forth. And if there's a reason why you're meant to do something else and it keeps pulling at you and keeps tugging at you, lean into that. You know, like 
there's no blueprint for business. You can do all the things you can do, whatever you want. You can build your business, however you want to and serve multiple people. But ultimately it comes down to how can you do it in the most elegant way for you? Like that's not going to overwhelm you and burn you out because it's very easy to get into burnout mode in what we do. Oh my gosh. I know. I, I went through that too for a while in my business with the burnout and it's funny how you just mentioned, you know, when you're kind of making those shifts and those pivots, how you can sometimes get confused and look back and be like, but I'm so good at this. And, you know, this business was doing, you know, this well, and everybody knows me for this. And now I'm going to do this. Like, it can be so confusing. I found myself doing that so much because for mm -hmm. years, you know, people knew me for health and fitness. My whole ent entire social media was all health and fitness, right? And it was yeah. like, I know I can help them with that. And I did like it, but I really love what I'm doing now. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, if you can just find that way to find what works for you, like you said, then you'll have just so much more happiness and fulfillment and you'll be like, all right, I'm on the right path. I can tell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but I love how you said that you're focusing on helping people on stages. Is that what you said earlier? Yep. So yeah, because that, that is, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say, just to clarify for the audience, when we say stages, Traditionally, what we think is live on stage. And yes, right. that's a massive part of it for me and what I want to do. But a stage is any platform where you're going to speak about your message. So you can literally, once you have a signature talk, you can translate it onto a podcast like we're doing right now. You can use that same messaging on a YouTube video or an interview with someone on a YouTube channel where it's more primarily video. You can use that same signature talk to speak to virtual groups like a, a summit or, you know, some sort of online event. There's so many different ways that you can speak on stages these days, which is really exciting. I love how you clarified that because I know like when I first heard it, I'm like, oh, speak on stages. Like, that's my big vision is I want to be, you know, on stages, you know, motivational speaker and all that stuff. <laughs> but it's good that you clarified it because there are, there are so many different ways now, There's so many opportunities to get your voice out there and your message out there. It's unbelievable. It's crazy. Yeah. And you'd be doing yourself a disservice if you only think about it live on stage, because if you truly want to make a bigger impact in what you do and those that you can serve, you have the capacity to make a global impact every single day. I know it's wild when you think about it that way, isn't it? Yeah. But so amazing. Yeah. And when you're getting ready, let's say, to speak on bigger stages, let's say you want to do a TED Talk. We don't start at the TED Talk. We work our way up to it, right? I always equate it to like with actors. Let's say there was someone who's like, I want to be an actor. And then... They take a trip to Hollywood and they're at a restaurant and they see Martin Scorsese and they go, hey, Marty, I can be an actor. Will you put me in your movie? Because I've decided I want to be an actor. No, he's going to be like, yeah, no, but you got to <laughs> work your way up. Like first you got to take an acting class. You got to learn that skill set. You've got to refine and tweak that skill set. You start speaking on smaller stages, you test out your content, your talk, and you work your way up. And it's the same thing with speaking on stages. And that's why it's such a beautiful thing that for us as experts, we have that ability to test out our messaging and our signature talk in a variety of different smaller stages in a variety of different ways. And so we work ourselves up to it, but like you've got social media, Instagram, TikTok, all these places where you can start to see what message is resonating and aligning with others and is creating a bigger impact and then can work from that place to start building your, you know, repertoire of places that you can speak that are bigger. I love that. I love that. Now, do you have, since you were just talking about platforms real quick, do you have a specific platform that you like to use the most? Do you use them all? For speaking, me yeah. specifically? Yes, you specifically. I like them all, but my favorite is probably always going to be podcasting yeah. because I'm a voice person, a voiceover person, and I just love being in front of the microphone. That's my favorite, then probably followed by speaking live on stage. 
Yeah. That's so fun. (laughs) That's great. Yeah. So now could you give the listeners some tips maybe that you could give them like your best couple tips to help them use their voice in business to Mm -hmm. have like more of a reach or more of an impact? What advice or tips would you give to someone? It sounds so cliche to say authenticity, but it's so true. There's two things that people are really craving today is authenticity and connection. And again, that's authenticity. It's an authentic (laughs) connection that people are wanting. So it's really authenticity. And I can't remember where it was. I don't know if you saw this, Kathy. I saw this on TikTok. Somebody was doing a talk and they mentioned that authenticity is the, I think it's the most powerful frequency. Oh, that sounds familiar. I think that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So there's nothing bigger than authenticity. And the thing is, is that people can get a sense for when you're not being authentic. Yeah. Yeah. They can get a sense when you're pushing your energy and they can also get a sense of when you're holding back. And so it's really hard to be really present and authentically connected with someone, but it is a skill set that you can learn, you know, and that's, that's what I, I teach my, my students is how to be really in that present circle that we're not forcing the energy and we're not holding back because sometimes people can sense that it's off. And then sometimes they can't even sense it, but subconsciously it's registering that it's off to them, which is when people will tune you out or they will turn you off or they will become interested or they're completely disconnected to what you're saying is because what you're saying isn't connecting. It isn't hitting home. It isn't translating to them. And they're just, they're on to the next thing because these days attention spans are are so short, you know, with social media, like we're always on to the next thing, the next thing. The I, next know, thing. I know. So we, we lose interest within the first few seconds that you speak. So right. if you can't grab our attention in six seconds. We're on to the next thing. Wow. That's awesome. So when you're talking about authenticity, what do you think is really the main thing that prevents someone from showing up like that and being their authentic self when they're trying to share their message or whatever they're trying to share or put out there? It could be a misconception of how they need to show up. A Mm -hmm. lot of people think they need to sound professional or act a certain way to be seen as professional or be seen as an authority. But that's where we get it wrong because people want to connect to actual people that they feel like they already know and like and can trust. That's where the no like and trust factor comes in. But it's legit. It's not just a throwaway term of like no like and trust. It literally is what they're seeking is someone who is their guide, their leader, their mentor, the one that's already done the thing that can show them the way. But if they can't trust you, they're not going to want to reach out and learn from you or work with you. So when they're seeking someone, it's got to be someone that already, it's almost like their best friend or like, you know, like their next door neighbor that they've got a really good relationship with or their favorite teacher from high school. It's someone where it's like, they instantly feel like they know them. They can't really put their finger on it, but they're like, I feel like I know you already. And that's called rapport. Yes. So when you've got rapport with someone, then they're going to start to trust you. So there's stages to creating that relationship. But the most incredible thing about voice is that those stages can happen literally in like two seconds. Wow. That is crazy. Really? Two seconds. Yeah. What would you tell someone who's having a hard time like someone who is probably aware like I know I'm kind of holding back like I know I'm maybe trying to sound like this other person that I follow on social media, who's doing what I'm doing. What would you tell that person so that they could start showing up more like themselves instead of trying to almost like be exactly like this other person that they're looking up to or or watching? Yeah. Cause that's never going to happen. Like anytime you're trying to match somebody else's energy and what they're doing, like their strategy, You know, it it doesn't work because it's not your voice. It's not your message. It's not your way. So we start with your story. Every voice has a story. 
it's got a history, your voice and how you're speaking today is directly related to how you started speaking when you were a little kid. So there's residue of history and experiences and maybe even trauma. All these things are literally in the energy that you convey every time you speak. So if there is a story, if there is a belief, if there is something that is holding you back, it will continue to be delivered every time you speak. So for example, if you were afraid to speak because when you were younger, a teacher said to you, be quiet, you're disrupting the class, be quiet. Yes. Let's say you're in front of a group and it's your turn to speak. If you were conditioned to be quiet, then maybe your voice goes in because you're afraid to be too loud or you're afraid to speak up until it's your turn to speak, you know? So all of the sort of behaviors and mannerisms and literally the delivery is orchestrated behind that subconscious belief that was instilled in you many, many, many years ago. So we need to shift that story so that you're empowered to use your voice, know that it's okay and safe to use your voice And that in these moments, people actually want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, they do. Oh, my gosh. That's so fascinating, though. Like when you were talking about the childhood, I immediately went back to, oh, my (laughs) gosh, because I am nothing like how I was when I was a child. I was, oh, my gosh, I was so shy, so quiet, so afraid to raise my hand, so afraid to speak up. But. When I thought back to when you brought up that memory of back in childhood, I remembered how one time when I was in, I was in sixth grade, this scarred me for life. (laughs) I finally worked through it eventually, but I remember I raised my hand in class to ask a question. It was in math, specifically math. And the teacher was like, what are you stupid? Mm. And that was me. Okay. Raising my hand in class with all the other kids around me, asking this question that I really didn't know. And she telling me, what are you stupid? And so for the longest time, I never raised my hand to ask a question because I was so afraid that people were going to think that I'm stupid. Right. And I had to have my dad help tutor me, you know, in math, like every single night, because I didn't want to ask these questions in class. And I literally had this mental block. Not only could I raise my hand, didn't want to raise my hand, but I also had a mental block that you're just an idiot. So just, just go with the flow. I mean, that stuck with me for years until I finally worked through that. But it's funny that you said that because it's so true. Like you have to work through those, you know, from the past. Otherwise, it's going to stick with you for the rest of your life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's yeah. tough if you don't want it to, you don't want it to be like that way for the rest of your life. And it takes a lot of work, but you can absolutely do it. Yeah. Wow. It's really interesting. So that's one part of it. But the other part is also like in moments where you're starting to that's more of like the subconscious belief, right. more of like the conscious level stuff that's going on is your internal thoughts that you are aware of, you know, like, what are other people thinking of me? Like, um, I'm not really an expert. Uh, I don't know what to say. When we have those thoughts, that also gets transferred through the voice. And that's maybe where a lot of ums and ahs and filler words come in or speaking too fast because you're afraid of taking up too much space. Oh, wow. That is good. I've never heard heard that that one one before. Oh, I hear that a lot. In fact, I was just on a coaching call earlier today and two women said that, that they speak fast because they're afraid of taking up too much space. Oh my gosh. That's so awful though. Yeah. But at least they're aware of it. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, it's, it's common, like imagine, and this is where you might see it a lot in the online space. Let's say you're doing a launch. So you're doing a webinar and you get to that awkward pivoting to your pitch. (laughs) Yeah. Right. Yes. And in the webinar, you might be speeding up because you're like, I want to make sure I get it done in 60 minutes. I want to make sure that people stay till the end. I want to make sure that people hear the pitch. Oh my gosh, here I am at the pitch. Okay. Oh, and now I'm, I'm starting to sound a little salesy. I'm following the, the, the script that I'm supposed to say here <laughs> and it feels unnatural and I feel really awkward. Are people going to buy? Oh my gosh, people just dropped out. Yes. Am I going to convert on this launch? All those <laughs> things are going through our head and we've lost the disconnect 
or we've lost the connection with the audience because it we've just made it all about us. Oh, yes. You're so right. <laughs> How can you stay focused? What would be a tip that you'd give to someone who tends to kind of do that? Like, how yeah. can they stay focused on making sure that they're there to really serve other people and that it has nothing really to do with them? It has everything yeah. to do with, you know, the other people on the other end. It's the same thing. Like if you're somebody who does sales calls, you got to set that intention right from the get go is before you begin, it's like your, your pre-show warm up. It's getting <laughs> your intention set in your mind that the outcome is to serve them in making the best decision for them. And you're going to provide the value and you're going to provide the content and you're going to make a case for why they should join your program or do the thing. So it becomes about them. And when you start to speak to them and really make it about them, it becomes less about you. And it's right. so much easier to not get into your stuff. Right. And then it probably seems so, comes so much more natural to them. They're much more authentic, which is what you yep. said you need to be. Mm -hmm. And I especially think too, like at the beginning, for example, when you were talking about like doing launches or webinars, like when you said like setting the stage and letting them know that at the end of this, there's going to be, it's not like a big surprise. You know what I mean? I think that does help too. But yeah, it's true. Yeah. So many people do that. They just get to the end and they just rush right through because they're like, oh my gosh, the sales piece. Now, do you think that when people do that, do you think that another reason why they do that has anything to do with like beliefs that they have around money and making sales? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. And this is where it, it gets more into like communication and, and strategies about that. But ultimately, you know, like I'm about to run a new program, a beta program. And so I've been speaking to people in the DMs and really selling and pitching through that. And it's incredible to see how every now and then you get someone who really wants to do it. And you can start to notice that the doubt starts to creep in. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful as the person who's got the program is to give into them giving into their objections. Right. But if you're there to really fight for them to be the best version of themselves, and you know that they're interested, but it could be something like time or um, money or, you know, like something that you know that chances are they can probably work through and make a way, make it happen, then it's up to you to give them a fighting chance and to not give up on them because the second you make it about yourself in that moment, you not only lose the deal, but you right. also lost that ability to change somebody's life. Exactly. It was so good. Oh my gosh. It's so good. That's so, it's so true though. All of it is so true. And it's hard for sometimes for people to remember that when they're in it, right? And they're in it. Or, or even if like, say you're someone who's like, just got into business and you so desperately need to make this extra income because maybe you just left your full-time job. Like we have a lot of listeners who are yeah. kind of in that boat where they've stopped their full-time job to go all in on a brand new business or to just mm -hmm. start one. And it's like, you definitely don't want to come at it with that place of desperation. It's all about me, 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 because then it's like the money never comes. That kind of mentality. That's right. Again, that's energy. So when we look at how we communicate, 7% of communication is words. 93% is energy. That is your vocal and your physical presence. That is the energy behind the words. And so that neediness is always going to get picked up subconsciously or even consciously by the other person. Wow, that's crazy. So 93% comes from... Your voice and your energy and your yeah, just your presence. It's presence. Yeah. Wow. That is yeah. incredible. Mm -hmm. Oh my yeah. gosh. I love yeah. it. And it's wow. all connected to your thoughts. Everything, like when we look at our human bodies and how incredible it is, is so many of the things that need to happen for us to survive and thrive happen automatically without us thinking about it. Breathing happens automatically. Speaking happens automatically. 
So when we have a thought, literally a thought goes from our brain to our body, sending a signal that you need to breathe. Once we have that breath, if you've got a thought that you want to put out there, the body starts going into motion from breathing. It goes into what we call phonation, which is like, literally, if you put your hands on your vocal folds, you can feel the vibration. That's your phonation. That's your breath getting turned into vibration, into sound. And then from there, this all happens without you having to actually think about it. It's amazing. From there, isn't it? Yeah. From there, your lips, your lower jaw, your tongue, your teeth, your heart palate, like all of these things are working together to take those sounds and create words. And then your body resonates it. Resonation is kind of like the acoustics, the amplification of your voice and your sounds. And so all of that then gets transmitted out to the other person and it happens automatically. We don't have to think about it. But if you know that there's a disconnect with your audience, if you've got a vocal habit that you want to shift, we actually have to become conscious of those systems so that we can shift the habit so that you can be a more effective speaker, a more effective communicator. Wow. This is so good. <laughs> this could be a three hour podcast if we really wanted it to. <laughs> and here's the kicker. It takes 66 days to create an automatic speech habit. So if you really want to shift something, it takes at least 66 days for you to create a habit that becomes an unconscious habit so that you're not thinking about it. And it automatically happens when you speak. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 66 days. It's Average. not the 21 days. Like they used to say. <laughs> no, because otherwise what happens is when we speak, it goes into a part of the brain where it's just, it unconsciously happens. It's an automatic response. So we will naturally revert back to the patterns that we created prior to puberty, because once we hit puberty, our language patterns and the way we communicate are set into place. That's why like a lot of people will say it's like hard to learn a language as you get older. Yes. It's, it's the same thing. Wow. That's incredible. That's yeah. amazing. I'm learning so much. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> If, you know, when you're looking at all the different people that you've, you know, worked with and helped and taught over all the years, what would you say, well, this is kind of a two-part question, but what would you say one of like the biggest mistakes that you see people making, like when they come to you, like for help, like that they, maybe they've tried in the past, it, it didn't work, like any kind of mistakes that you've seen people doing, trying to maybe become their authentic self and use their voice in a way to be able to reach more people so that it does sound like their authentic self? It's a big question because it depends on the outcome. But I would probably say the biggest mistake is, goes back to what we were talking about before is like pushing the energy mm. and thinking that when you show up to a podcast or speaking live on stage or creating a TikTok or any of those things, there's like an unnatural energy that comes out where it, it doesn't feel like you. And so I think people are overall pushing their energy when they don't have to. And yeah, I think just a misconception of like how they need to be perceived to be an influencer, to be right. seen as an expert and you know, all of those things it's coming off unnatural. That's probably the biggest mistake. Yeah. I know. I know. I mean, you see it all the time, you know? Yeah. Wow. This is so good. I love it. Thank you for everything. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> so when you are like in all the people that you've helped, do you have like one person, maybe one or two that have really stood out to you that had like a crazy transformation or almost like breakthrough after going through maybe one of your programs or working with you one-on-one -on -one or like any kind of transformation that really stands out to you when you think back? Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot with this one. <laughs> That's okay. I'm just thinking as you're saying that. Yeah, take your you time. Know, there's so many different transformations that I've had because I work with so many different people. I know, it's so neat. There's one, there's two that come to mind. One where it's like, the cool thing about voice is 
the transformation can happen really quickly. I was working with a seven figure online entrepreneur earlier last year. So almost a year ago. Yeah. And he came to me because he was doing a lot of sales calls and he was in a bit of a sales slump. He hadn't hit like his last five sales calls weren't converting. And in one session together, the next day he had two sales calls and he converted both of them. Wow. That is and they're like unbelievable. high ticket sales. So it was like a huge boost for him confidence wise, but also that, you know, a simple shift was able to get him results again. Wow. That is amazing. Yeah. Oh, I love so that's that. how fast it can happen. Another example that comes to mind is I was working with someone who is a podcaster. So they already know that their voice is really important to them, mm -hmm. but they were a perfectionist and really leaning into like sounding professional and wanting to get it right. Mm -hmm. And was scripting episodes and wanted to start to pull back from scripting and more conversational and more, you know, referring and riffing off of bullet points. And for that one, it was such a great transformation to watch because to watch someone who I think is so used to being in control of a moment and now allowing to strip back and not be so in control created a beautiful connection on the microphone that when you now listen to her episodes and people even comment on her podcast now, how much more it resonates with them, how much more enjoyable it is. And, and you can really hear a difference for her as well. Like sometimes we have blocks where we're like, I just don't know why it's so hard to use my voice. And we were able to remove that block. So she could really just, you know, speak oh. from her authentic voice. So that was really cool. Oh my gosh. I love that. I love mm -hmm. that. Like the whole control perfectionism. Shush. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I had to work through, I'm still working through it. I don't think you ever yeah. really hundred percent overcome it, but oh my gosh, it's just so good. Mm -hmm. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. So can you talk just a little bit about now this new beta program Yeah, that you're going to be, when is it opening up again? Monday, did you say? Yes. Yeah, uh, so the 30th of January is our, that's our welcome call. So officially our first call is on, I think it's the 6th of February, maybe. Okay, uh, cool. We're going to be, yeah. So that is for anyone who has a message that they want to share on bigger stages, more stages. So I'm going to be helping a small group of experts craft their signature talk and learn how to deliver it in a way that captivates and connects and ultimately converts for them as well. Wow, that sounds amazing. So if people want to get more information on that, where do they go? And I can put this in the show notes too. Do you have like a... Yeah, so I would say for that, because it's in beta, the best way to reach out and get more information would be on Instagram. And okay. my handle's... Catherine underscore Beck underscore. And okay. so just reach out and just let me know that you're interested in speaking on more stages, even if it's not live on stage. Again, it's really, if you have an idea for, you know, a talk or something that you want to share on any stage, even like guest podcasting, we're going to be crafting that together. So we, we know that you've got a topic that is of interest to other people. The great thing about having a signature talk as well is it's another way to create traffic for what you do, as well as position you as the leading authority. Oh, yes. And give you that credibility too. That's yeah. what we want. Yeah. We yeah. want to be the authority. <laughs> That's it. I love that so, so much. Yeah. So I would say just reach out on Instagram for now is probably the best step. Okay. Awesome. Um, and then we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes, but did you have anything else that you think the audience should hear? Anything else that's maybe on your heart or on your mind that we didn't get to talk about that you want to leave the listeners with? We didn't really talk. A, we, I mean, we talked a little bit about the first six seconds, but we didn't really dive deep into it. So 
I've got a free training. If you want to jump into that free training, you're welcome to. It's called the Six Second Cell, and I can send send you the link if you want to give it to your listeners. But that is the most important in today's world. If you're creating content, there's so much competition online and market sophistication in all industries is so high right now. That first six seconds is make it or break it. And there's certain key factors that you need in those first six seconds in order for people to continue to listen to you and want to learn more from you. So I would spend so much time, like if you're somebody who's creating content, spend time on those first six seconds, because that is what people are deciding on if they know, like, and trust you and ultimately want to work with you. I love that. Yes. I'll definitely have to get all those links from you so I can put it in the show notes because that will be really helpful for everybody. <laughs> yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, definitely. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Catherine, for being on the show today. You were so knowledgeable. I'm sure that the listeners have enjoyed every single second of this. Um, and just thanks again for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All right. No problem. I'll see you soon. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode, my friend. Thanks so much for listening. You know I love you, and I think you're awesome, and I will see you the next time. Bye. Thanks so much for listening in. I really appreciate you choosing to spend your time here with me today. You totally rock. Hey, listen, if you love today's episode, go ahead and tag me on social and go share this with a friend right now. Like, do it immediately before the day gets ahead of you and you totally forget. Couldn't be more pumped to be on this journey with you guys. Go make today awesome, and I will see you the next time. Bye.